All right, so I think the first thing we're going to talk about here is how to um, work with the DOM. So the DOM is, you know, it's an acronym, D-O-M, Document Object Model. And without getting into too much gory detail, it's the DOM is a mirror image of everything you see here uh, in your HTML. So before the browser is about to, uh, but right when the browser receives the response from the server that contains all of this HTML. Um, every one of these nodes is turned into an object, basically, in memory. So this whole thing would be a gigantic tree of objects, uh, you know, where HTML is the parent, and then it has two children, um, you know, exactly what you see here in object form in memory, because, you know, this, this text is impossible for, to work with for the browser. It needs something in memory that it can change and access really easily. Um, again, you know, exactly what you're seeing here when you in inspect the element. This is a visual representation of, of the DOM, which is just this big tree of objects. So if I say the DOM, that's all it is. It's a it's this object uh, representation of the HTML that the browser is uh, working with and interpreting in order to um, show what you see over here. That's why if, you know if I go over here to um, you know change one of these margins, you know what am I doing? I'm changing the values, literally the the property values on an object that's in memory that the browser in is interpreting, and that's why the behavior uh, is changing on the screen once I mess with those values. So. Um, so to focus on how JavaScript actually gets access to the DOM is important because to do anything you really need to change the DOM a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this that we have here and I'm going to go ahead and keep the on click attribute as kind of the, the trigger for what we're showing here. But instead of calling blah123, um, <clears throat> let's do something like uh, toggle highlight we'll just call it toggle highlight and I'm not going to give that any parameters I'm just going to say toggle highlight so over here if I get rid of this and I say function toggle highlight now the important thing here is there's no parameters so I don't really have any object to or any information or object or anything to work with all I, all I know is somebody has commanded me to toggle highlight so what I can do here um, is I can use some built-in JavaScript functions to actually access the DOM. Uh, so the one that I use most often is um, probably well, this is actually before jQuery. But if I had to, if I don't use jQuery, you know, the native JavaScript uh, function that I use mo most often is usually get elements by class name. So uh, let me see if I spelled that right. Get elements by class name, capital N. Everything's case sensitive, so be careful. <coughs> get elements by class name, and then the parameter you pass the name of the class, which in this case is uh, flow dash image. So not only am I going to grab it, but I'm also going to store it in a variable. So I'll call it um, images. So notice the S here, get elements by class name. This is going to scrape the whole DOM, and anytime it finds something with class name of flow image. Uh, it's going to go ahead and throw that into a collection of elements and that collection is going to be what it returns into this variable. So now when I refresh the page I have this on click event bound to my flow image element and uh, as soon as I click on it it's going to fire this toggle highlight. Uh, the function itself uh, it's a oh I see I made one mistake so document is the, the most important object in JavaScript. Document is actually the um, the symbol that refers to the parent node of the DOM. So what this actually says is uh, go to the root node of the DOM and everything inside search for every element that may contain this class name. So that makes more sense than just a function invocation called get element by class name floating around. It's got to have a contact context. So you know, if you had a, a child node inside of the DOM that was a smaller portion of the DOM, you could call that ele uh, get elements by class name on that instead of searching the whole DOM. So you want to search the whole document in this case, everything inside of the body. So if I alert the object that was returned by that method, I should see, hey, it's a collection. Well, I don't want to just see that it's a collection. I actually want to see something like, hey, what's the length? So try that. And it says there's one element inside. So I scraped the whole screen. I came up with a collection of one item. So I'm going to, instead of alerting that out, I'm going to literally pull that out of there. I'm going to say var 
img equals images sub zero, why not? So now I have a variable called img, which is going to be a reference to my, you know, that one image. So if I alert it there, now I should just see one thing, an object maybe. HTML div element, even better, it's more specific. So I've basically what I've done now is I've gotten a hold of this right here. I have that. Uh, my img variable in JavaScript is a reference to the object that controls uh, what you see on the screen there in the flow image. So that's good. So what I want to do is I want to change something because I mean that's you know why would you go and grab it if you didn't want to do something to it like change it or remove it or or something like that. So you know the simplest example I can think of is maybe we want to change uh, one of the styles. So right now, you know, it's using flow image, obviously. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my styles here. And I'm going to go find flow image. So just to make this easy, you know, like I said, don't get upset. This is not really <laughs> the, the best way to do it. But, you know, later on uh, when we get into more modern techniques, um, I'll show you a better way. So I'm going to copy and paste that whole style. But I'm going to make this, um, this one I'm going to call flow image highlight. And instead of orange, I'm going to make this red. Okay. So now I have two styles. I have flow image and I have flow image highlight. So the reason I did that is because that's going to enable me to do this. As soon as you click on it, instead of alerting, I'm going to say image dot class name equals flow image highlight. So now when I click on it, you can see it turns red. You know, even better than that, if I have my inspect element open and I say, hey, show me that. So right now I'm looking at flow image and you can see over here uh, the style that has border two pick solid orange. You know, I can toggle that on and off in here. Uh, and it also shows me that my on click is toggle highlight. So now if I get out of there and I actually click on this, you know, you can watch that the style literally changed from flow image to flow image highlight. So that's pretty cool. That's kind of like the whole um, life cycle of you know how that stuff happens. You, you know, you grab something out of the DOM, you change uh, a style property, and you know you can do a lot with that. So, um, you know, but I named my method here toggle, and that's not really toggling. That's just changing the color once. Um, so in order to actually make this a true toggle, I could do something like, um, let's examine the current name of the thing that I just clicked on. And if it's highlighted, then I want to unhighlight it. But if it's not highlighted, then, um, I mean, if it's, if it's highlighted, I want to remove the highlight. And if it's not, then I want to add it. So say something like if image.className is equal to flow image, so that would be if it's not highlighted. Then I want to say image that class name equals flow image highlight. Alright, so now I have to cover the other case, which is the else. Else if image that class name equals flow image highlight. Then I want to change it to the opposite. Just plain old flow image. All right, so that's kind of a toggle. However, there's an error that I see here that you'll notice when nothing happens over here. So nothing is happening when I click on it. The problem is, and th that's kind of the reason that I introduced this toggle, because you know you want to be aware that when you're changing the DOM, you might be breaking your code too. So <clears throat> this first line of code is what the problem is. I'm scraping the screen and looking for things that have a class name of flow image. But what I've done here um, is I've changed the class name so it no longer has it. So the moment that I uh, change this from flow image to flow image highlight, this is no longer ever going to find anything because now my element has the class flow image highlight and not flow image. So this is always going to be zero. So the only way to do this, at least the, ob the really obvious way to do this, is to say um, find the images and 
find the highlight images. How about that? Document dot get elements by class name flow image highlight. Let's make this a little wider here. So now I have two collections here. So H images of zero. And this code is really ugly. My variable names are horrible. But in the code that I'm putting on GitHub, which is basically this, a little prettier, um, it won't be as bad. So now at this point, I don't even really need to check what the class names are because the mere existence of this variable not being null would mean, oh, I did find it and it has the, the class flow image. And the very existence of this variable not being null would mean, oh, I did find it and it is the class flow image highlight. So I don't really need to check the class names once I've, you know, I know I only have one element and I know it only has one of these class names, so I really can just do null checks at this point. So that ma makes it a lot easier. Um, so I can do something like this. If I image or if image is not equal to null, then do one thing, else do the other. And in that case, it should do it. All right, let's see if that works. Red. Oh. See, this is why I love Google Chrome. You cannot set property class name of undefined. So this the first time it worked, it changed from orange to red, and the second time it didn't, because I made a mistake. So the second time, you know what? Let's debug it. So let's go to sources, and let's kill that by clicking hide drawer. And let's just refresh our page here. I'm gonna put a breakpoint right there in the if statement, and then I'm gonna click flow. And I'm gonna step over F10 should change it to red, and it does. Oh, well, of course, I totally r ruined my syntax here. I don't even have else if. So let's go over there and fix that. It's the first problem. Else if. Oh, I totally want to remove this. So this is just a simple if else. Um, so I only have two possibilities, so I don't need anything else other than if this, else that. So now it turns red turns back to orange, turns back to red, turns back to orange, so now everything works fine. So let's see here. Um, that's uh, it's a fairly simple way of doing it. I guess I don't really need to declare these variables at all. I can just say images sub-zero, and I can just say h images sub-zero, and images sub-zero right here. I guess that's a little cleaner. All right, so then our toggle is complete. Oh, nope, what did I do wrong? <laughs> How did I do that? I totally erased that. And this is H images sub zero. Somehow I don't know how to type today. All right, that should complete our toggle. All right, that's good. So now, now that we've got the basic idea of you know how to grab uh, certain elements of the DOM and change them or do something to them, uh, let's just do a little more. So let me open this up and say, well, how about I actually like change some text on the screen because maybe it's not prominent enough that I'm just changing style there. So let me look into my HTML about me. And how about this flow caption, the words next to flow. So what I can do here is, back in my JavaScript, I can say, you know what, let's do more than that. Let's say, um, oops, let's say var captions equals document dot get elements by class name flow caption. So now captions sub zero should be the caption. And let's, in both cases, change the text to say, hey, we just did something. So I can say captions. Now this is interesting. So caption sub zero is basically this guy here. Oops. This guy right here, the div that I just had. So every element has this, you know, for what's in between its begin tag and its end tag. And in JavaScript, if you want to change that, uh, you basically do that by accessing the property called inner 
HTML. You can set that to whatever you want. So I'm going to do that for both of these. And but I'm going to set them to something meaningful. So I'm going to put here var caption text and um, let's see how about I say oh I don't even need the var variable caption text I'll just say um, just set flow highlight high light on and I can do the same thing here with off. So that'll be a little more interesting at least because we'll be able to see something happen on the screen. So it's just set it on, just set it off. So now we can see different things happening. So I'm here I'm modifying a style and over here on the left in the caption area I'm modifying an element in our HTML. So that those two things alone are you know like the the two primary things you'll ever want to do and they give you a whole ton of power to change almost everything on the screen. So you can change pretty much any content on the screen with just those two uh, tools. So let's see, is there anything else I want to say here before I move on? Um, I think, you know, once again, I already said this, but I just want to repeat it. Just keep in mind that what I'm doing here, um, selecting things by classes, there's about, you know, I don't know, 100 different ways to uh, go about working your way through the DOM and grab things and you might say oh Donnie why aren't you putting IDs on the on the HTML and doing get element by ID instead of you know getting these arrays and, and, and indexing them uh, or you know why aren't you writing a function that you know can e more easily you know pull out exactly what you want um, and I will tell you the reason is because nobody even uses stuff like this anymore because of jQuery so um, almost anything you can critique about this is because um, you know, really jQuery, you know, when we get to it, provides us really easy ways to, to query the DOM. So um, it, it, at this point, it's, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, all browsers support jQuery at this point, so it's not, it's, it's kind of a moot point. Um, and the other thing is, you know, I've been repeating this a, a few times, I'm going to say it again, you know, you want to make sure you change the HTML as little as possible. So even, you know, I'm, I'm kind of unhappy with this even that I had to do that, you know, on click equals toggle highlight. And in, as a matter of fact, this is another example of what not to do. Uh, and when we get into talking about uh, unobtrusive JavaScript, you know, I'll, I'll show you ways to avoid doing this. Um, you want to be able to um, attach both styles and behaviors without changing your HTML. Um, unfortunately, you're never going to really, at least at this point, you're not really going to be able to get away with um, putting classes on your, your uh, HTML, so that's kind of necessary right now. But, you know, aside from that, uh, you know, you can use these classes later with, with jQuery uh, to, in an unobtrusive manner to kind of get at this stuff. So, in short, you know, to answer any questions you might be having, I don't want to put these events here in the HTML. I don't want to put IDs on my divs so that I can find them in, in JavaScript. I don't want to do any of that stuff. You want to do as little as possible in the HTML layer because really this is the hardest thing to change and it's the easiest way to break everything. Uh, maybe not now with a little application, but certainly later when you have, you know, dozens of pages and each one of them are, you know, maybe thousands of lines long each. Uh, so that's my little rant about that. And so in the next uh, two videos, we're going to get into uh, the dynamic nature of JavaScript and uh, just some more interesting techniques for, for changing the DOM.